Hi, Angie here for MyNextTablet.com. Today with an unboxing video of the new Lenovo Duet Chromebook 3, which is the new Chrome OS tablet that is the successor to the very popular Lenovo Duet Chromebook, the first one. Let's get started. All right, let's start the unboxing of the Lenovo Chromebook Duet 3 or Lenovo IdeaPad Duet 3 Chromebook as it is called in some countries, but they're exactly the same tablet. Depending on where you're from, it costs 400 euros or around 430 US dollars, so around 400 euros, 400 dollars, and that includes a keyboard, but certainly not the pen. So let's start the unboxing and inside the box, we get the charger first. Then there's a standard USB-C to USB-C cable. And we even get a USB-C to 3.5 millimeter audio jack adapter, which is not common these days. So it's nice that Lenovo is including it. Then we are getting the keyboard cover. And this one consists of two parts. And just like with the predecessor, we get a back that is connected magnetically and then the keyboard, which is connected using a magnetic connector as well. Looks pretty standard. Then we get the tablet itself, of course, and it looks very similar to its predecessor, but it has gotten a little bit bigger. And then we are getting a case for the USI Pen 2 from Lenovo but we don't get the pen. As I said earlier, you've got to buy that separately. And then we get, you know, some standard paperwork like warranty, quick start guide and so on. As usual, a couple of days have passed since I shot the first part of this video already and I already ran some benchmarks, played a bit, watched some YouTube, Netflix, surfed the web a bit and even worked a little bit with the keyboard. And yeah, now I can tell you a bit more about the Lenovo Chromebook Duet 3. This is an 11 inch tablet now. Um, it has gotten a little bit bigger compared to its predecessor. We're getting symmetrical black screen bezels. There's a five megapixel webcam on the front. And on the back, we're getting an eight megapixel main camera. There's no LED flashlight or so. And as you can see on the back, we're getting a mostly metal body, like this bottom part is metal, but then we get some plastic on top, but it feels like a premium plastic, like it has a little bit of a texture to it, like it makes it more premium feeling. Like especially, like in general, when holding this tablet, it does feel like a premium tablet, but once you look very closely, you can see that it is not as premium as an iPad Pro or the Samsung Galaxy Tab S8 series like the transition from the screen to the metal body is not as elegant as on those, but that's very standard in this price range and not a big downside. Here we get uh, two volume control buttons, then we get a power button here. On the bottom, we've got a USB-C 3.2 Gen 1 port, and on the other side, there's another USB-C 3.2 Gen 1 port. So it's one of very few tablets that have two USB-C ports, which is really nice to see. And I already tested it, you can charge the tablet using both ports. That's very nice. On the bottom, we're getting a connector for the keyboard cover. And then on this side, we've got a speaker. And on the other side, we've got another speaker. The good thing about this is that the speaker is not down here. So when you're holding it like this and you're watching a movie, then you're not covering the speakers as easily. With that being said, sadly, the sound is not amazing. Like the quality of the speakers is actually okay. Not amazing, but okay. But I think it's a little bit too silent. Like when I watch YouTube or Netflix and I'm alone on the sofa or so, I turn the volume up, up all the way. And I wouldn't say that I've got particularly bad ears, like maybe you know, normal. Um, but I wish it would be just a little bit louder so that when you're maybe with two persons or maybe there's some slight background noise that you can turn it a bit up more, but that's not possible. So um, yeah, the speakers, the quality, as I said, is okay, but I really wish there would be a bit louder. And like this, I won't recommend it as like a great entertainment tablet because of the speakers. Now let's check out the keyboard cover. It consists of two parts. As I said earlier, there's this back part, which is connected magnetically. 
So let's connect it and yeah, works just like with the predecessor. You put it on like this and then here we've got a little slot for the case of the USI pen tool and you can fold it up like this and then you can stand it somewhere. And you know, when you're watching YouTube or something, you can use it without the keyboard, just put it on a table and then you can watch something. And yeah, you can fold it out quite wide. And I already tested the magnets, they are quite strong. Um, like I would be comfortable to just grab it by the kickstand and move it. But when you're like using a lot of force, it can fall off. So be careful with that but I think the magnets are certainly strong enough. And then the keyboard is connected magnetically as well. We've got this little connector here and it has this, yeah, connected to this fabric. You just put it like this and then it's connected and you can fold it up like this to protect the screen. So the back and the front are protected and it's also held in place a little bit by magnets so it doesn't wobble around that much as it did with the predecessor. So that's quite nice and it looks like a standard laptop like this. Now the keyboard um, is relatively big since we got an 11 inch screen now. It's not as big as on a big laptop of course, but it's fine. Like I was able to comfortably type on it. I would say the typing experience is quite similar to the Apple Magic keyboard. Of course the keyboard feels a little bit cheaper because well this all is a lot cheaper, but yeah, I was able to comfortably type on it. I don't think uh, you won't have any issues with that. The touchpad is okay. Obviously it's not the biggest, but since we've got a big touch screen, I think it's okay that the touchpad is quite small. Um, one downside is that you cannot angle up the keyboard, like you cannot use it as an, at an angle, like you can with the Microsoft Surface Series, also with the Surface Go keyboards, but well, that's okay. Especially since the keyboard here is included and you don't have to pay anything extra. Now, what I want to do is hold it next to some other Chrome OS tablets. One tablet I've got here is the Asus Chromebook CM3 that was released last year. Let's hold them side by side and the size is very similar as you can see here. Um, what's kind of weird is that I think sometimes it's quite hard to find the CM3 so maybe Asus is not selling it that much anymore. And then we've got the very first Lenovo Duet Chromebook that was released maybe like two years ago or so, or maybe even longer than two years now. Um, but it's still being sold. Recently I saw it somewhere for like $250 including a keyboard which is really really cheap. But now, well, we've got the newer version here. You can see it's gotten a bit bigger because we've got an 11 inch screen now compared to a 10 inch on the first one. Okay, let's get to the display of the Lenovo Chromebook Duet 3. It's an 11 inch display now, so it's a bit larger than the previous generation. And it's a standard LCD at 60 hertz, all normal in this price range. And we're getting a resolution of 2000 by 1200 pixels. That means the pixel density is not as high as on the Xiaomi Pad 5, for instance, which costs about the same but without a keyboard. And it is similar high as the Samsung Galaxy Tab S6 Lite 2022 generation and also the previous one. And that's fine. That one is sold without a keyboard. So if you factor in the keyboard, the price is about the same of those two tablets. And that's why I think the pixel density here is fine. Overall, the screen is fine, nothing bad to say about it. It's 400 nits bright, which is not as bright as an iPad Air, also not as bright as the iPad 9. But on the positive note, this is a fully laminated screen. Colors look okay, contrast is fine. Everything is basically fine. It's not the best display ever, but it's certainly good enough in my opinion. On a negative note, you cannot watch Netflix in HD resolution using the Android app of Netflix, so you can only watch it in standard definition. But we've got a Chrome OS tablet here, so you can just open Netflix in Google Chrome, and then of course you can watch it in full HD, so you can max out the resolution of this tablet using the Chrome browser. And YouTube, of course, you can watch in full HD and both the Android app and also the web app in Google Chrome. Now let's get to the stylus. This Lenovo Chromebook Duet 3 
supports the USI 2 stylus. And Lenovo is also selling a USI 2 stylus, but so far, so far it's only available in the United States, not in Europe where I am. So I couldn't buy it yet. Maybe I will import it for my final review because sometimes it takes um, quite a while for some manufacturers to release all accessories worldwide. Um, but for my final review, I will have it. I cannot test it now. What's really sad is that it does not support USI 1 pens. Here I've got the HP USI stylus, USI 1 stylus, that works great with the HP Chromebook X2. It works with the first Lenovo Dual Chromebook and also with the Asus Chromebook CM3. Many Chrome OS devices support USI pens and that one used to work with all. But in this case, the touch screen that Lenovo uses here, like the display, the um, digitizing layer, this one does not support a USI pen, only USI 2. But if you get a USI 2 stylus, it will work with tablets that support USI 1 pens, like a USI stylus, USI 2 stylus would work with the first Lenovo Duet Chromebook. But the other way around, it does not have to be that way, like this one does not support USI 1 pens. That's very sad because if you are using a Chrome OS tablet already and just want to get a newer generation, then you also have to get a new pen. A bit disappointing, but that's just how it is. Now the first USI pens I didn't like, so the first Lenovo Duet Chromebook I never recommend it if you're looking for a tablet, especially with active pen support. It's only fine for occasional use. But maybe the newer one, it's supposed to be better and it maybe is better. So I cannot say yet if I will, will recommend this tablet if you like a pen. I really have to test it for my final review first. But the first ones really weren't that good. Now let's check out its inner values inside the Lenovo Chromebook Duet 3. Once the Qualcomm Snapdragon 7C Gen 2 processor, that's an ARM chipset of course, and we get 4GB or 8GB of RAM and a 64GB up to 256GB internal storage. I've gotten the cheapest version with 4GB of RAM and 64GB of internal storage and at the moment there's no LTE version. You can see my Geekbench 5 benchmark comparison here and it's really nice to see that the Chromebook Duet 3 is much faster than the first Lenovo Duet Chromebook which had quite a low performance as you can see in this comparison. But it's also more powerful than the Asus Chromebook CM3 which is a direct competitor and it's also more powerful than the HP Chromebook X2 which is another direct 10 inch competitor. But you can also see that the Xiaomi Pad 5 is faster and the Apple iPad 9 which is another direct competitor is much faster. And remember with the iPad 9 that it's running almost like full Safari which can support web apps. It's like almost desktop Safari. So that's still an interesting competitor if you want to get something from Apple. Now I couldn't test the graphics performance in benchmarks because the Geekbench 5 compute test is not supported on Chrome OS. However, I did test a game of course and I ran PUBG Mobile and it runs very smoothly. And I was quite surprised that you can set the graphics not only to balance and not only to HD, but also to HDR. And as you can see here, that game runs really well. Like it's very smooth and I enjoyed playing it. So this certainly can be a gaming tablet. Like if you're a student, you can, you know, play during the lessons, maybe secretly a little bit or certainly during some breaks. And yeah, the performance here is certainly better than entry-level Android tablets, which I would otherwise recommend as a gaming tablet, like, you know, getting a mid-range Android tablet or an iPad 9. The iPad 9 will be much better in PUBG Mobile. But um, yeah, I'm really positively surprised that you can play PUBG Mobile here with HDR settings. So it, had, it has a decent graphics performance. Everything else runs fine and that certainly goes for the Chrome browser. This is standard desktop Chrome and I already worked a bit with Google Docs, which is a web app and also surfing the web and so on. All of that works fine. You can have, your, you can have YouTube running in the background and surf the web or do some office work. All of that runs fine as well. And all the Android apps I tried also run 
without any issues. So the performance in general here for its price is pretty good. Yeah, and then let's check out the software on the Lenovo Chromebook Duet 3 runs Chrome OS of course. And Chrome OS has a huge advantage compared to all Android tablets because the updates are delivered by Google directly. Similar to Microsoft who is updating Windows directly, it has nothing to do with the manufacturer of your laptop or desktop PC, it's delivered by Microsoft. And the same is the case here. The software updates are delivered by Google and not by Lenovo, which is a big advantage because Google is updating Chrome OS much longer. And that means you can see it here, it says in German that this device will get automatic software and secure update, security updates until June 2029. So for a really, really long time and that certainly will be longer then every Android tablet will be updated. At least that has been in the past, you know, as you know, a big problem of Android devices. And it might even mean that this tablet will be longer updated than the Apple iPad 9. Apple is also really good, but they don't update their tablets forever. Um, so yeah, we will see how long it will go. But yeah, 2029 is a really, really long time. So it will be up to date for a really, really long time. And that really is a big advantage of Chrome OS because updates are such a big downside of Android tablets. Another big advantage is the full Chrome browser, of course. This is full desktop Chrome. And that also means you can use exactly the same extensions like I'm doing here that you're used to from your Windows computer or your Mac. I'm having a last pass here and it's exactly the same extension because it is exactly the same Chrome desktop browser. And that's another advantage of Chrome OS, you're getting a full desktop browser. You don't have to make any compromises with Chrome here. And what you're seeing now is just the touch interface of Chrome. If you connect it to a keyboard, then you're getting you know, the standard desktop interface of Chrome. With that being said, you don't have to use web apps alone although they work great on here. You can also install Android apps because the Google Play Store is pre-installed and using the Play Store, you can install almost all Android apps. I say almost all because I tried to install Adobe Premiere Rush already, which is not supported. So there are, might be some apps that are not supported, but most of them are, and that by, by the way, also goes for Microsoft Edge, I've got the Android Edge browser here installed. It makes no sense, of course. I just do it for fun. And yeah, so Chrome OS, you get Google Chrome, the full browser, long updates, full uh, web app support thanks to Google Chrome and also Android apps. So on the software side, we really get a lot here. All right, so much about the Lenovo Chromebook Duet 3. I really have to test this tablet now and I'm very excited to start my full review. I'm also excited for the pen, which I hopefully will get from my final review. And yeah, my first impressions is very good. I like that we get a pretty premium build, uh, certainly good enough screen. Also the performance is pretty good. The software is very good. And yeah, overall it seems to be a really nice tablet. We're getting a keyboard that is included and I'm sure it will be, you know, like a um, little secret that you can get quite an inexpensive Chrome OS tablet, including a keyboard at around $400, which is really nice, especially when prices drop a bit and maybe it goes to like $300, $350. That will be very interesting. The only big downside I've noticed so far are the speakers. Um, as I said, they are not as loud as I wish they would be. And that's why I will not recommend it as an entertainment tablet because I think a good entertainment tablet at $400 should also have really nice speakers. That is possible in this price range. So yeah, it seems to be a great tablet for students, not so much for entertainment, but playing games in your free time, in your spare time, that certainly is possible. So yeah, I will start my review now. Maybe I will find other major weaknesses. So subscribe to this channel if you want to hear about those. But I hope um, we won't find any, but you know, you never know. Sometimes there are big bugs that you only find later on.
Alright, that's been my unboxing and first impressions of this Lenovo Duet Chromebook 3. If you've got any questions, write them down below. I'm NJ from MyNextTablet.com. Thanks for watching and see you next time.